Welcome to Premier Scene, I'm Claire Bueno, where you will find us over the rainbow at the European premiere of Judy. Wild Rose to Roslyn, Roslyn, Roslyn Wilder. There is the great job being an actor. <laughs> I have an excellent job being an actor, don't I? Oh God! <laughs> polar opposite to what we've seen you play before. Can you can you tell us a little bit more about the relationship that Roslyn had with Judy? Um, well, it you know it's very weird actually. Those relationships are shown, I suppose. Um, but she was kind of a young woman who was starting out, and she. I think uh, Judy, in a way, cracked Rosalind's emotional wall. She's kind of sl steely. Yeah, she's um, well. She's trying to, you know, do something with her life in a world where it's a kind of male-dominated world. So she just thinks that she's got to be that way, and then Judy kind of tornadoes right into her heart, and and likewise, I think. Rosalind does to Judy as well in, in a way of holding and caring for her and um, yeah I think you know what, what's wonderful about the film is well, there's a real kind of fragility to it isn't there yeah that, did that kind of entertain you as well yeah I think I suppose especially from, from Judy Judy's story is, is one about humanity really and about you know she's this incredibly special powerful vulnerable strong gift which cost her every time she gave that um, and at the core, core of who she, um, money, money. <laughs> <laughs> and at the core of that, she's a person, you know, who needs, who needs people to look after her. So um, yeah, people are fragile, beautiful little butterflies. You got to look after them. I mean, was it was it nice for you because there's a certain expectation for for Renee because she's playing Judy Garland. We expect a certain kind of mannerism, but for you that your character isn't she's a person, but not really known. So did that free you up to be able to bring your interpretation to? Um, yeah, I mean Rosalind Wilder is still alive, and she was very uh, much uh, gen you know very generous in sharing who she you know who she is and who she was at that time of her life and what her relationship to Judy was so um, and I suppose for me what drew me to the character was that it was something which was very far away I'm, I, I'll never be that organized ever in my life even if I tried I can't you know I can't be that organized making a cup of tea never mind like so basically I was trying to kind of sharpen up my organizational skills that was my main purpose for taking the role <laughs> What an incredible story to be a part of. It's not everybody that gets to play Dorothy. I know, it's such an honour and I think that kind of resting on your shoulders, it was a bit of pressure to get it right. Um, but I researched a lot and I think I did um, an okay job, like matching up to Rene and kind of stuff like that, like her accent and stuff. Yeah, it was a huge kind of responsibility, but I hope it's okay. <laughs> did you and Rene work at, at all um, together kind of to try try and strike the kind of the balance? Well, we had um, a dialect coach who kind of matched us to each other, our accents. But I got to meet her a few times as well. She's such a lovely woman and she's she was so talented and I think she deserves everything that's coming her way from this film because she's just so amazing. And of course, playing um, playing Judy Garland as a young girl, uh, we're getting to see a side that we've there's been alluded to, but we didn't really know a lot of about how difficult it was for her a life in Hollywood. Was that quite a responsibility? Yeah, I think trying to like find kind of um, more information about how it was back then and like the kind of background that she came from and stuff it was quite difficult i read like a really good biography about her trying to learn as much as i could but yeah it was good i think there's a rainbow wanting to burst out today <laughs> i have to say for an actor the opportunity to do a screenplay like this is a gift isn't it it's an absolute gift. I mean, I, I remember when I read the uh, read the script for the first time. I had to do four auditions to get this part. I remember reading it, thinking, "I'll be blessed to be in this production." Uh, and when we got to the read through, uh, this group of people that they got together. I mean, it's very rare you get people doing things for the right reasons. Everybody's singing from the same hymn sheet, and this was absolutely that. And uh, we produced an amazing piece of work uh, for an amazing woman, and I can't wait for people to see it interesting because your character is very much kept on his toes isn't he um, with, with, with Judy can you share a little bit more about because um, she's quite temperamental 
I think she, uh, like I said, I think she's misunderstood. I think uh, my character especially has a, has a preconception of what, what she will be like. And he expects the confidence in the show. Um, but there's something else underneath that. And I think that comes out through the film. And your, your, your view of this woman changes. And Burt Rhodes, my character especially, he, he, um, he has to look after her. Um, and he has to support her. Um, even though she's an exceptional talent, you know, everybody needs uh, somebody to look after them. And uh, like I said, we made a film about a very misunderstood character um, and a brilliant, brilliant character. That's what's lovely about the arc in your character is you're learning and gaining this greater understanding of this complicated lady who's had a very difficult life, hasn't she really? Yeah, she has and um, I think uh, we, we show it in a way that's touching and truthful and you know, it's like me as an actor, I always look for truth. It doesn't matter what story you're telling, it doesn't matter how big it is, it doesn't matter what the character is. It's all about truth, and it's all about those relationships. And uh, like I said, you see it in this, we made a brilliant piece of work. Tell us about working with Renee, because she really is phenomenal in this film, isn't she? Can you tell us a little bit about your working relationship and how you built the, the rapport? I mean, she's phenomenal in everything. Um, it was an absolute pleasure to work with her. I mean, she is, she is one of the greats, and uh, she's transformed herself for this. You know, her commitment, every day to, to stain that character, to keep that physicality. And you know, it's so draining. I don't think people understand, you know, to, to keep that, to change your body shape, to change your mindset is the hardest thing as an actor. I think to keep your mind in a place that's not you and to make it truthful is one of the hardest, most draining things. And she does an exceptional job in this. And, and just finally, um, I think what we see from this film as well is about the fragility of, of showbiz for uh, an up and coming actor where you're in a film play with, with a lady that was a child star for a year, you know, she was performing from she was two years old. Uh, what lessons have you learned just have about how delicate show business is? I think uh, there are a lot of people trying to do this job, so there are a lot of people who can exploit you. I mean, it's like any industry really, but I think it's heightened um, in our industry, especially because of social media and, and the fact that it's so public all the time. You know, every job you do is, is, is public and, and you as an actor starting out to you as an actor at the end of your career, everything is still public, everything is still trial and error. So I think you really have to protect yourself um, and you have to have good people around you. I think that's what I've learned from this. You really have to have a good support network and honest, truthful people behind you uh, to keep you on the right track. We see um, very two different sides of the rainbow here, don't we, with Judy's life in this film? Yeah, you see the sort of the start where it all began with Wizard of Oz, and then you see, I guess, pretty much the end of her final concerts here in London. Was it, was it, what was it about that particular chapter in her life that you found particularly interesting that you wanted to explore and you wanted audiences to kind of gain an empathy with really? I think that like any artist towards the end of their career often is doing their most interesting work you know that's true of like Roger Federer in a way you know you watch him at Wimbledon you go how much longer so I, I think there's something special about the way a sort of late career artist produces these extraordinary works um, you know it's a London story as well a British story and so we kind of you know wanted to celebrate that um, and it's uh, you know in some ways it has a weird parallel to the Wizard of Oz in that like you know she's a long way from home trying to get home uh, and uh, and trying to find love. What I, what I loved about the film is that no matter, I mean, she's really in a, a, a desperate situation and she never loses this spirit. She's still, she's still fighting. Was that as well something that, and the, the courage that she had, was that something that you um, wanted to explore as well in, in Judy? Yeah, I think her spirit is almost her defining uh, characteristic and her wit, uh, you know, and, and she was... Um, yeah, she was really down on her luck at this point. Totally broke, you know, mocked. You know, she wasn't the Judy Garland people remember from Carnegie Hall or Wizard of Oz. You know, she was a busted flush. And you know, I think I think now in this age of celebrity and when we've seen how celebrity has chewed, and chewed up, and we've had it in England, haven't we? With lots of good examples of, you know, people who have maybe had fame thrust on them before they were ready or unable to deal with it and it's affected their mental health. I think that you know that's timely. And was it very important as well to to, to to bring this backstory of Judy when she was a young girl so we could see, you know, the, 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 the cause and the result of, of the kind of life and that, um, the tyrannical life that really that she led as a child because of the regime of Hollywood? Yeah, she made this, 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 this pact, you know, I want to be famous and the studio said, fine, these are the terms and they were terms that were pretty unforgiving. Uh, 
Yeah, and, and it's like the irony, of course, is she's so famous for The Wizard of Oz and being the, the girl that we all recognize from our own childhoods, and yet she didn't really have one. And, and the film at some level is trying to look at how she then tried to give a childhood to her, her children in later life. Congratulations. I don't even know where you begin to start to write a script about the, the latter part of Judy Garland, the chapter of her life. Um, can you share how you became accustomed to the story? Well, it began with Peter Quilter's play, uh, The End of the Rainbow, um, which sort of chose this particular chapter of Judy's life. Um, I think because it, it sort of captured her at her most vulnerable. Um, and uh, But, you know, despite that vulnerability, despite all the challenges that she faces, uh, she still manages, you know, uh, on the nights where it comes together to blow audiences away. And uh, so uh, yeah, that was the beginning of it, really. And when the producer, David Livingston, um, asked me to start looking at it, um, the, the thing that really um, moved me the most was probably looking at some of the original interviews uh, that Judy did in the mid-60s. Um, and looking at those interviews, most of which are still on YouTube, uh, conveniently, um, you, you see this, this woman who is incredibly polished at giving a very entertaining anecdote from one of the you know, many decades that she was out there working. But at the same time, you see moments of real vulnerability uh, when she's questioned about her children um, in particular. Um, and I just thought, you know, she looked fascinating. She, uh, you know, there, there was a thread of anger there, but also incredible wit and humanity. And I just thought, this looks like a, an incredibly complex woman. And, uh, and I wanted to get to know her better. So, so that started things. And, and interestingly enough, what, what I picked up from it as well is that for, for the, the, the delicate situation that she has found herself in, she still has this wit, this spirit. Um, you know, she's a fighter, isn't she? Absolutely. And, you know, uh, you know one of the, the things that I found emotionally uh, affecting was uh, the more I learned about her, the fact that she'd been working since the age of two. Um, and, you know, with a stage mother who, when they were out on the road uh, doing vaudeville, you would, would sort of tell her, you know, if you misbehave, I'll just leave you here. And they'd be in some city in the middle of the country where she had no idea where she was. And the more I learned, and this is even before we get to her MGM days, about how much she had to carry with her. Um, you know, the more impressive it felt that, uh, that she managed to endure and survive and come back and fight and actually forge that beautiful connection with her fans um, that was so resonant. Um, so, you know, that was, uh, you know, that, that was very moving. Interestingly enough, what you say about forging the connection with the fans, there's a beautiful moment um, in the film that really does, one of many tear-jerking moments, but really, really powerful with Andy Nyman. Was that a scene that was dramatised or was that something that actually happened? I mean, the, the, the original play has a, uh, a, a gay character who's an accompanist um, to Judy during her London dates. And we, we wanted to move away from the balance that the play offers of this fictional character and Judy and cleave something a little closer to the events. But at the same time, it felt important to us that um, her relationship with that community um, which was, you know, highly reciprocal. You know, I think, uh, you know, those moments where they connected uh, live, uh, you know, they're, they're astonishing, really. And we, we wanted to acknowledge that. Um, and I, you know, I think it, that relationship um, ends up capturing something about, uh, about Garland and her relationship uh, to, to love. You know, she, she, was, she was always sort of seeking love that she could rely on and the, the great challenge was that she was parted from family, she was, uh, she was parted from husband after husband um, and, and actually her relationship with her audience, the ones who came out for her night after night, even on the nights where other people were throwing bread rolls, was in a sense one of the most enduring and uh, we wanted to pay some tribute to that and explore that as well. Interesting as well. I won't keep you forever, but there's so many things that we could talk about with this. Was um, she was very much an object, you know? She was on this kind of tyrannical kind of regime, really. Um, you you delicately balance um, 
what happens in the past, but it, oh, it doesn't overtake it, but it's enough to give the audience some uh, um, acknowledgement of what she's actually been through and why we see the Judy that we see th that day. Yeah, I think the, the use of flashbacks, you know, developed um, as, as I worked with Rupert, the director in particular. Um, and I think we, we always thought they were going to be a challenge because with Judy, there are some people who know almost every week of her life uh, so intimately. Uh, but there will be other other people coming to this story with very little awareness, really, of um, of who she was and and how those kind of uh, the challenges of her early life uh, affected things. I think um, one of the things that we thought was interesting was by by taking you know these weeks at the end of her life and pairing them with these uh, these formative weeks as they go into production on on the you know on Wizard of Oz. Uh, really, you're offered sort of two ends of the rainbow. Uh, you know, the the young the young woman who is so full of life and promise. She's so spirited. Uh, you know, there's that kick of rebellion to her, um, uh, despite everything that is being thrown at her. And and at the other end, in the last year of her life, uh, you have echoes of that, and you also have uh, a sense of. You know, how the challenge of living through those months uh, is informed by that period. So for some people, they, they, they'll go, well, I know all of this. Um, but for others, you know, I, I think it will be essential to understanding why that time was so challenging and you know, what made a hero of her when she managed to get up time and again and, and do it uh, and to, to make that connection. So after a rainy red carpet at the European premiere of Judy, there's only one thing left to say. There's no place like home.